here talking with uh, David Mortman. He's uh, Chief Security Architect at Dell. And uh, David, uh, what do you want to talk about today? Well, thanks for having me. Today I'm going to talk about uh, some research I did with Adrian Lane over at Securosis about the security of big data systems. Uh, there's been a lot of talk in the last few years about big data. You know, what does big data mean? And in terms of big data and security, there's really two things that are going on. There's, you know, can you leverage big data to make security decisions? And I'm not really going to talk about that today. But rather, when you have a big data system, you have some, you know, you have a lot of data, some of which could be quite confidential or quite business oriented, and how are you securing that data? So we've been looking at the variety of different uh, systems that claim to be big data, uh, and that is everything from really large relational databases to NoSQL systems to Hadoop and a range of things in between. And what we found is that generally speaking, especially when you get into the NoSQL space or the Hadoop space, there isn't really much in the way of security. These are products are not designed with security in mind, and while there are some of the commercial products, you know, some of the commercial implementations of Hadoop and things like that have layered on some security, it's still very rudimentary, so it's important to keep that in mind when you start, you know, doing big data to isolate those systems as much as possible, for instance, or, you know, not necessarily launch them up in a cloud environment if you're dealing with confidential data, unless you're, you know, comfortable managing the, you know, like underlying file system encryption and are confident that you can lock down access to only your environment. Well, well that, that strikes me as interesting right off of uh, why would we think that securing uh, big data systems would be any different than uh, than securing any other kind of uh, uh, large data cache? I mean, the, the main thing is that uh, is that uh, the one thing. So, big data, in, in essence, is really you know, uh, you know if, we, if it was a few years ago, we would have called it you know business intelligence 2.0 or we would have called it you know, analytics 2.0 or something like that. But instead, someone decided it should be called big data. Uh, and in terms of you know, what the kinds of searches and the kind of work that's being done, big companies have been doing this for 10, 20 years. There's nothing innovative at that level. One of the big changes is that with the advent of tools like Hadoop, the big cost of running these things, particularly in a cloud environment, has dropped by orders of magnitude. So suddenly, the kinds of research searches that governments were doing and folks like Google and other large advertising oriented companies, Amazon for instance themselves, is now available to a much you know, to much smaller companies because the, the price tags is now in the hundreds or thousands of dollars to do this as opposed to hundreds of thousands of dollars or more. Um, and the tools themselves weren't built with security in mind. So whereas if you were using say a giant Oracle system, there's a lot of Oracle has spent a lot of time and money and people like to make fun of Oracle about security, but they've put a lot of time and effort into making it securable as a product space. Um, and they have a lot of overlays and things you can do, and that stuff just isn't available in in non-relational systems yet. They're targeted at a very different market, a very different way of doing business, and uh, there's no identity and access management for the most part, there's no encryption for the most part, and sort of the basic things you're used to having with a large-scale database just aren't there. And it's not necessarily a problem, you just need to be aware of what you have and don't have so you can make the right decisions for your business. And, and, and aside from the fact that you say a lot of these uh, uh, tools were built without any uh, security in mind, I mean, what's the, what's the biggest challenge? What, where's the Where's the biggest hole we need to be worried about? I, I mean, I think it, it, it's just like there really is, I mean, there's an assumption that if you have access to the system, then you, have, then you can legitimately access all the data. So there's no concept of, of, of access control. Uh, a lot of them you don't even authenticate to it. If you can connect, to, if you can attach to the system, you can start querying against it. So there's just a very large, you know, it's being incredibly easy to accidentally leak a lot of, you know, data you think is kind of important. Um, and it's one thing, it's already bad enough if you're losing, like, critical uh, intellectual property, but there's compliance concerns if you're doing anything related to PCI or anything with healthcare and the personal information, you want to make sure you've locked that sucker down because the last thing you want is to accidentally expose one of these systems to the entire internet. And where are you guys uh, taking the, uh, the research? What, what direction is it going? Uh, what's the next step for you guys? I think the, uh, the market, there's a few companies out there that are starting to layer some of this stuff on, so I think the next question is, is, to, start, is to continue watching the market for a while and see you know what overlays become available and but mostly at this point it's just me to it's it's sort of sit back and wait and see you know what direction things go uh, 
like I said, several of the commercial folks who have commercial implementations yeah. Hadoop have layered on some security, and there's a, more and more stuff coming. It's a maturity issue more than anything else. So I think we'll see over the next few years some of these issues being addressed, and some of them are just going to be things you're going to have to say, oh, instead of uh, what you have to do is just build your cluster and then just isolate the snot out of it and be very careful with third-party technologies to lock that down. Uh, so, uh, so some uh, folks who are, are probably really interested in finding out uh, uh, what you guys have done with your research, uh, where can they find out a little bit more? Can we expect some publications or a panel? Or? Uh, so we gave, the, we gave a talk about this at Secure360, and at some point that'll be online. Uh, Adrian, who did the bulk of the back-end research um, with actually talking to uh, companies and, and uh, customers and whatnot, has actually published a white paper on uh, Securosis.com. And it's it's free it's freely downloadable, no registration or anything. You can just go go to securosis.com, there's a link on the front page for the research library, and there's a a a large white paper there about all this stuff that breaks it all down. And then we've submitted variations of this talk to some other conferences, so hopefully it'll become a we'll be doing it again right, somewhere next year. David Mortman, thanks for taking the time out to speak with us. Oh, my pleasure, thanks for having me.